Okay, I'm gonna get started. This is a lathe project and we're gonna go through the document. It's a quick series part document for lathe. A lot of people wanna learn lathe. This is actually a cool little project. In fact, we, I, we've done tops at my school. We've done, you know, spaceships. Zoom in some again, Mark. Got gotcha, you, boss. And uh, handles for press fits. So at our school, we use lathe a lot in our projects. And so as I scroll down, we're gonna get into it. The quick part series, most of you guys saw this. We can go standard or quick part. And to the point, the third lecture, I'm, I'm over that part, but let's get into this, the tool pathing. In other words, this is what we're gonna work with. The part that you see on the screen is what we're working with. And I, I understand what they're doing here. You can machine the saw up, but they're making us machine wireframe here, which is okay. But we're gonna take, and this first section, we're gonna create a turn profile based off the solid and load laid machine. Really simple steps. We're not drawing a lot. It already configured in this. So this is all millimeters. Again, uh, you can switch them over to inches, no problem whatsoever. But we're going to come in here, and they're going to do a, a toolpath profile. So again, they go into the level. So it's reinforcing the students to work with levels. We'll just call it, um, I'm just going to call it uh, toolpath geo. That means geometry. That's all I'm mean, giving it a title name. And what they want us to do is come over here and, and use what we call this turn profile. From this information here, I'm gonna select the solid and I'm gonna use the upper profile only. As you can see when I do that, this is the geometry I want to create this. So I'm gonna spin it, I'm gonna check it. And now if I go ahead and turn off this, there's my profile. It was that easy to project images off that solid. I'm kind of confused about their design. I'm letting you guys know now. Um, when I looked it over, I, I I always want to make sure, and I'll show I'll show you what I mean. And either they change the drawing, or we got to add another toolpath to it. That's all I think of. I don't I don't know if I got far enough. So I did the turn uh, profile. I got the 2D geometry. We spun it. We did it at the upper level. So you, as you read this, you'll go through. We spun it. We hit check and we produce that image that we saw here. So I'll make it bigger. Uh, I don't like that color. Let me do that again. Let's, let's make this uh, better for you to see. And dark and a little bit thicker line style. And so that's better for my audience. I do that for my audience on those, my students. Um, Mark, how now, hard would that be to uh, create an AutoCAD to bring over? Not at all. DXF would work fine. Yeah. Uh, it's not hard at all. You can design it, anything, bring but any, I think any they could software. Bring, uh, AutoCAD file directly without even doing the conversion, right? Correct. When you, uh, let me save this one real quick. And if I bring this up and open, here's all your extensions. So let me see if I can minimize this a little bit. All your extensions, Master Cam will read all these different. There's all your Autodesk projects, your Parasol, that's your Pro E, you got your Pro E down here too. This is, this is solid, uh, Parasolids. You got your step files, you got your um, SolidWorks, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, I want to say OEM, but I don't know what, my, my, lots of a lot of vocabulary talking so much. It's like solid part. Uh, yeah, the solid part, but it's called uh, native, their, their native extension. How's that? I'm gonna try with that one. STLs, you can bring in, you can machine STLs, but there's a lot difficult to uh, modify them. There's other softwares that do that. And so those are all the different ones you can import. And so Thanks, you can draw Mark. in any software and bring it in almost. What's that? No, oh, I thought I heard someone. Anyway, Thanks. so tool. Thanks, you answered a question. Oh, okay. What was the question? Just what you answered. Right, you showed okay. us all the different place, all the different places to get the files. Okay. Yeah, that's a mesh cam. All softwares are generic that way. So you can go in there. And all softwares you can drag and drop, except for some of the cloud-based softwares. So I'm going to use a, a millimeter um, slant bed style. And we just um, we just let uh, we just set up this information, lay to group toolpath. Now here's this. So we just loaded that machine and then it goes into the students. This is what I want to show some of you people. So as you're working online, you have some questions. You could add more questions to that too. Hey, I, in my lecture, I showed you, I showed you this little button. I showed you how to, I changed the colors. Hey, do you remember I talked about holding down shift to chain information? Hold on shift, chain it. 
And you notice when I wrote, I, I right button mouse clicked and I choose the color. I selected it again with a window. These are questions you can add to that. And, it, and I made the line thickness so I could see it better for you. So there's a lot of things that you can add to all this information to the students and just create more test questions if you want. Now that we have that here, we're gonna do our stock setup. Since we defined our, our part, we're gonna do our stock setup and build our chuck in here. So we'll come back here, expand, just like the mill, we go into stock setup, but it's a different interface. Lathe has your spindle, it has your, your um, chuck jaws to define. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna choose this. Now, they're doing it a different way here uh, of, of setting up the material. So they want to create a line between here and here to set up the material. So I'm gonna get out of here, check that. They want, and I, I, I don't do it this way, but most teachers that I know, we actually have to know the size of the material that we're gonna purchase, and that's what we go off the rough size. So we created that line. They want us to come into our properties. Now we can come in here, set up our properties. And as I go through, it says select the OD. Okay, when it selects the OD, it's gonna select here. Now, that's why I don't use my geometry as my reference to this. What I do is, I look online, I teach my students to purchase, because you can't find, what did they want us to have at? 38 millimeters. I don't know if you can find a diameter of 38 millimeters. We can find, what would that be, an inch and a half? inch and three quarters or something like that. I don't know what that comes out to. 25.4 is one inch, so this will probably be uh, five eighths or three quarters of an inch. We can find those materials, so that's what I go by. So if it's in millimeters, I do the conversion. So the next step it asks us to do is the length should be the length of that line. So they want us to teach you how to say, hey, you have geometry out there, why don't you select it? That's that length there. Well, let's go 400. Or was it 100? I forget what it was. 90, they want us 90, that would have been forever. And then we want to set a margin that we can face off and they want us to the right. So they teach you how to go to the use the margin button here. And I can come over here and put, was it 0.5? Yeah, 0.5. And I can preview that boundary and you can see there's the margin distance from, from the origin out here, that's a half a millimeter. And the distance from here to here is the OD, which is 38 millimeters. Okay, so we have that defined. Now, the next thing we want to define is, let me pull that back. I'm going to pull this over here because that gets in my way. Alt-Tab. And we're going to come over here and we're going to define the chuck now. In the chuck, enter. We're done with this. We'll go to find the chuck. This is for collision to help you out. Uh, see collision. We'll use parameters. And they ask you to go to parameters, and then we're going to just say from stock. In other words, we're going to put the distance from here to here at 30 millimeters. Now you'll start seeing this. So from stock, 30 millimeters. And I don't know if you can see this, but the distance from the chuck, from that point to the, where it's holding the chuck, is 30 millimeters. Let's take a look at that. From there to there. From there, you can barely see it here, and I'll show you why, because it's all wireframe. We'll say, you can preview that, you can see it better now that way, or we'll hit enter, check. There's two ways you can view it as a shaded boundary, and that's easier for people to say. I still don't like shaded information. I'd rather see it wireframe, but I can see it if I need to go. That looks good. I have material to remove from the top here, which is a good thing, so I'll turn off shade it. And now I defined my setup for what I'm going to machine. Not that hard. You've got to understand that everything we're going to do is turn geometry. Like, take a look at this part. Say this part right here. Well, is that a turn part or a mill part? To me, that's a mill part because there's no way to keep two halves in there to spin. This, as I turn it out, this is a turn part. And all I got to do is learn to remove geometry. This was a uh, quite difficult part. In other words, you had to really think it. There's a logic to it. Because if I machine all this stuff to here and then come back and do the details, this is real weak, so the tool will be flexing. So you have to learn to machine in boundaries. 
I machined from the tip here, just that first part, right, to here to here. And then I would machine this part, and then machine this part. And I keep this one at its full diameter that was back here to keep it as rigid as possible. This was the last thing, and I still got a little chatter right here, but I had to remove all this before I did the threadings. So you learned uh, on the lathe, you're gonna, you're gonna do bit machining, and this do document teaches you to do that. And it's kind of like, Wow, that's pretty interesting. My, my, my videos show that too that way. It's kind of, kind of cool to do that. So then we go ahead and save it, and we answer a set of questions. I'm not going to let people pre-read those. <laughs> but anyway, so from here, we're going to learn tool pathing. Lathe, is, to me, is one of the easiest things to machine. So I'll zoom in on here. And I'm going to go to my tool paths. Turning, we're not doing milling. And we're going to face it. Facing is kind of like it does it automatically. So we're gonna filter out the tools. Oh, did I change my library? No, good. So where's all my tools? There they are. That's what I was looking for, I had to turn off there. Um, so it tells you what tool to choose. Where's my tools? Oh, before, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Let me cancel this, no. What they want us to do is to show the students that, hey, we're not working in X, Y plane anymore. We're working in D and Z plane. As you can see, this is your normal X, Y plane. We're working D. D is the cut toward the spindle, and Z is cut toward the spindle, and D is the diameter of the part. And that's what that stands for, is the diameter, and that's still the axis. But we're really moving on the X. So a lathe uses both X axis for the diameter and Z for basically the length of the parts. So I'll have that set there. And that's what they're asking us to do there. And go further, you can see the DZ, I just changed it. And now uh, tool plane, that's fine. I'm not gonna worry about that little setting there. Now we wanna face it. So we're gonna use the face command in the tool path. When we do that, we wanna pick the tool that we want. They're asking us to use this tool here and as I go down, you can see it's 101. We're using 101. And as we go down, it tells you the feeds and speeds. I'm not gonna spend time in there, but they're just saying to set all this stuff uh, to feeds and speeds, which those are pretty slow feeds and speeds at 25. But they're asking you to define the operation we're doing in here. So front, op, and it helps the students see when they're at the machine to read what operation they're gonna be cutting with that tool at that moment. And they should visualize that it's just gonna go down the front and face it off. From here, they want you to get into the tabs, okay? So the face tabs are over here. All they're concerned about is this right now because the face toolpath, I didn't select anything. It just does its job. It knows the machine to zero or whatever that distance is here. I'll face it off now. We can back plot that and unzoom and a little bit more here. You can see the tool, it's a tiny part. So we can play it and there it is. So the, the part has been cleanly faced. We can see it in, vis in, in a solid 3D. I'm gonna turn off, I'm gonna turn my stock on the solid and run it and it will face it just like if it would if it was on the machine. And we got that part done. Now the next step, it walks you through about widow and weigh certain things from roughing to all that stuff. So we're gonna get in here and we're gonna do a back plot, which we just did. We're gonna do a, a face, which we just saw. We saw the solid face and verify, and we can answer the questions that the students will have at this time. So it's a good resource for online. I hope to see more. And now we're going to get into where we can actually, hold on, that slid on me. Oh, wrong way. Am I going the right way? Oh, slow down. There we go. That we're going to get into the um, tool pathing of the roughing. So uh, you're going to set up a rough tool path, enter the tool path parameters, set finished tool path. This whole section, these are the goals. Enter finished tool path parameter, verify in a simulator. So it walks you right through it. We're gonna choose the rough tool path. We're gonna to go through, we're gonna select the geometry. We're gonna start here real low. We gotta zoom in on there. We're gonna go up our direction of chain. If we have to change it, we need to. 
pull that back. That's just too close. Um, we can make it fit and we want to touch. So what lathe does, that's different than the mill, Let's put this at the top, we'll zoom in on here. So I'm gonna to go to turning, rough, start the direction, it looks correct. It defaults to what we call partial. So you touch your first entity and where you wanna to go to. I think I just wanna to go to here. I believe that's where it tells me to go. You can see it just clicks there. So that's the last entity. If I would've clicked here, it would've gone all the way there, but it stopped there. Once you're done selecting what it tells you. So we're gonna whittle away the front of this part first. Okay, and we're gonna choose that same tool. But in our parameters, we're gonna do different parameters because it's a roughing tool fast path, not a facing. I'm not gonna put any of the comments in, but we're gonna come over here and say equal depth at two millimeters a pop. That's one of the most important things. So we got the tool, we set our feeds and speeds. I'm not gonna set that because of time. Rough tool path, two millimeters. Stock to leave, uh, um, uh, two tenths of a, a millimeter, two tenths on the Z. Let's see what the document says, same thing. Now we're gonna go into equal steps. Oh, they want us one millimeter, it looks like right here. We need to change that to one millimeter, not two. So where they want one millimeter, which is a lighter cut. Uh, stock to leave, it looks like just, it's not much in millimeters, but we'll just go ahead and pop that in there, just so that students can learn. Uh, then lead in, lead out is one of the most important. So we wanna set this up where we're gonna lead in, lead out, and this is the button here. So we're doing all this. We can adjust this through the arrow. They want us to be horizontal here going in. Now, that means if I did it this way, it would come down this way and cut, come down this way and cut, come down this way and cut. So they are asking us to go directly into it and to lead away. Let's see what the lead away. Does it want at 90? They want us to be 90 going straight up. So when it's done, rather than which I prefer this, because that means once it's done here, it pulls diagonally away from the chuck. They just wanna go straight up, which is controlled to go straight up. Many different ways. Let's see what else they got here. Now they want us to define a, a, define a line without drawing a line. So the line will be 180. So this, we can use this parameter. Sometimes you have to create geometry on lathe just to, to get what you want. They want us to make it, was it 10? Can't remember. What did they say? Uh, 26. So they want the, the tool path from that point to extend back about 26 millimeters, which is about an inch. And I believe that should be it. And as you can see, all that cleaned all that out there. And I didn't draw any geometry. I just added and defined that. So the next step, cut uh, parameters. Oh, a plunge parameter. It doesn't need to be set. It's already set. That's too soon to mess with that. Um, the next toolpath is going to be a finished toolpath. And they want us, it looks like they want us to do the same chain that we did for the roughing. So we just focused on this whole front part of the top. So I'm going to choose this. I'm going to zoom into the part. And I'll choose the last part of it again. I believe that's what it was. And hit check. Uh, it looks like they're using Thank you very much. Yeah. It's got a good heft to it. Thank you. Um, oh, kind of good. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to use awesome number goodness. How do you move here? Don? Don? Okay. 21. Um, let's see if I can find the 21. There it is. That's what we're going to use. And once we have that, we set the feeds and speeds, follow the instructions there. Then we're gonna to go to the finish. We're doing a two with a one finish, a finish step over, um, what the heck's that called? Uh, millimeters, two millimeters. It tells you to leave X zero, uh, Z zero. Number of finishes one, make sure counter compensation is right. And you check all those values. The students look at here. And as a teacher, we will explain those. Well, stock to leave on X, that means it'll leave information right here so if i left one millimeter in here they'll never cut down to the finish if i left on the z it would be this way uh, amount of finish passes i can do it three times if i wanted to kind of redundant once you cut this it's cut that's very important to see that so you look at these informations and you follow them lead and lead out again how do we want to control this well it's going to enter down from the bottom so so lead in we can go horizontal lead out we can go 90 like it did before 
now it doesn't want us to create a line and we've done that already so you can see this is pulling straight up 90. they do want us to add a line and i'm just gonna look at the value now because i know how to do it 180 at eight uh, millimeters so add a line i can i gotta define where that line goes it goes from the here and then i can put in here eight millimeters go beyond that and say okay and as you can see now that finished toolpath as you can see here it goes to that point there and we can look at what we have for so far i'll slow this down a little bit so you guys can see it it faces it's cutting and we got that finish up to there i can set it to translucent my stock you can see it there and since i don't have a solid on i can't see the solid but you can see it goes around that geometry i'll turn the solid on later and show you that it's kind of cool um, so we'll go back to the document the students follow through this document we talk about plunge parameters i'm not really about changing because that's the default we're going to get into this because we're going to have to set this values so the tool will come behind here it's one of the uh neat things about mastercam i like the way to control the plunges so as you verify it, that's what we saw. We continue on. I'm not going to worry about the bookmarks. They can learn that later. It's just a lot of information. Uh, setting those is not important. The tools and showing that. We'll get to the last part here, which is doing the, what I'm wearing today is called the dynamic. We're going to do some dynamic toolpath, dynamic roughing here with this on a lathe, which I think is crazy outstanding. So we're going to choose this and we're going to end to there. So let's take a look at this. So this is our dynamic toolpath generation here to here. So I want to restart removing this material. And that's still not enough. I should move remove some of this material. But remember, I don't want this to be so weak that it bends. There's not that much material here. So it looks like we might have to define a line in there again. Well, this tools that we have here is not the tool we want. The document's taking the students into a new area of selecting a tool library that comes with this project called the spinning top. So myself, I have to go select a tool library so I can get the right tool. And these can be shared. You can create your own and hand them out to people. Here's the lecture three. Here's my spinning top. There's two tools. Um, how am I supposed to rotate it? I'm going to take a look at that. I'll explain that one later. I don't know why that's that one. So these are the two tools. This is going to part it, and this is going to profile it. So I'll just choose that one. And uh, there's my new tool. And this tool is a special tool because it uses what we call an insert that's a round. So it can cut back and forth, back and forth, back and forth easily. So now that we have that tool, we loaded it, we cho chose it. Now we're going to go to the parameters. I'm not setting the feeds and speeds. Um, it's step over 15. Step over 15. Oh. Again, this is like on, 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 on the mill, the radio engagement, the radius, the toolpath, the radius of the toolpath is 15 again, your axial and radio, and stock to leave is 200, 200. And there it all is, looks at match. They want us to check the lead and lead out. Again, we got to come in, lead and lead out. Lead out, looks like we might have to add a line. I'm going to hit that just in case to check it. And they do ask us to add a line because we want to be able to create out here and remove some of this material. We got to get this away so we can part it off. And so we're going to do that. Define line again, add line, define line. We'll start from where we left off. We left up there, right here. And we want to go to 10. Okay, that, now this is the most one. This is the first time we really got into plunge parameters. We have to have it into this one. So we, this will allow it never to plunge. This will allow it to go back in here and plunge. But we're gonna keep that tool in this area here. And the document will show it. Okay, I better save this. I'm not gonna have a little trouble. This is neat because this is dynamic lay tool pathing where the tool will go back and forth and remove it look at that it goes back and forth back and forth now as you get closer you can see that this is finished so that the materials at the final this is unfinished because we left two millimeters so we need to clean that up so we have to do a finish tool path and we're going to stay in that location to remove that stuff 
go further down. Now we're back into the finish toolpath. Where did it say? Lay finish toolpath. Okay, so dialogue. So we're gonna get into the lay finish. Again, just choose finish. Chain the same thing. Check. Same tool I believe they're gonna use, right? 14, there. Parameters, feeds and speeds. Come down to the parameters. Uh, two millimeters, one, two, one, lead in, lead out. I want to come down, lead out. I want to go up, add a line lift, see if they do. Most likely, we probably want to extend that tool path to go a little bit further, or it may not go back. This one doesn't look like they're going to add anything to this. So I'm going to just stay with where they're at. We'll turn that off. No biggie. And plunge parameters, make sure we're plunging down in there. It will not work. I'm going to actually leave that there to show you. To see what it does. It might fit, but I don't think it can. You see what it did? Because we didn't turn on the plunge parameters. So we come over here, plunge parameters, allow that tool to say, hey, go beyond, follow the geometry, don't stay on the OD, the outside diameter only. And this is the difference between the two of turning one on and one off that allowed the tool to go down there. So we'll save that where we're at, 36. We're doing good. I think we might make it. So as you can see, every lathe just doesn't just happen. You have to be careful with your material, flexing, whatever. So that's where we're at right now. Now we got to get rid of this stuff right here so I can do a parting. This material has to go bye-bye. But you can see how much the part is holding on. There's still some strength in it. Now we'll deal with the final part of it. And that will tell you in this document the step-by-step -step of it. And uh, we got that. We did the finish. That's what we looked at. Uh, you got multi views. That's something you can learn and read on your own. Now we need to get down to here. We got to see how it's cleaned out before we just part it. And we're going to do some dynamic again. We're going to do this one with dynamic. We'll go over this real quick. Same tool. Settings of 15, 90 degrees going down, 90 degrees going up. And at a line, our distance of line is 10. So watch the flow. Once you get comfortable with it, you can just go dynamic. Here, check, select tool, set feeds and speeds, check your values here. Value, values here. I'm just gonna leave those alone, I'm not gonna worry about it. Lead in, lead out. I wanna lead in this way, I wanna lead out that way. I wanna add a distance of a line, and I want that to be defined from this point here, where I left off, and that will only be 10. That allows me to remove that material there. And so the students will get felt, I mean, com comfortable with this, and it's like, wow, how'd you learn this? Because I'm doing it over and over and over again. And as you can see, I just removed all that material so I can park this off. Save that, in case I crash. And now we're ready to park that off. Oh, what are we missing here? Why is there material there? Student forgot to do what? Add a finish. We'll do the same thing. We'll do the finish. Let this fit. Now I know those tool paths get in the way. All you have to do is toggle display on, toggle display off. And you can turn those off. So let's go to the last thing would be finish. We'll select this line here. Check. Same tool. Same information. Lead in that way. Lead out this way. I wonder if we add a line. I don't think we add a line on this one. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say they didn't add a line on the finish. Let's take a look. It may be wrong, there's the parameters, and no, they did not add a line. Okay, so so they didn't add a line on there. And I'm gonna show you a, a, a thing I see that might be, I'm gonna make sure that's there. So you can see that now I clean that off, okay? Remember this little, this little doohickey there. That's a word or not. So I'm gonna put that here and um, the next tool path would be to cut it off. So now we need to cut this off. And we're going to use the intersection. So we're using the cutoff command. We're going to find the intersection using what we already know how to collect an intersection would be from this line to this line. And you can see how his is cleaned up here. This is kind of a false statement, I'm thinking. But let's take a look here. I probably should have picked up uh, this deal, but I don't think I, I would have dropped it down. And I don't think he picked that up but I'll show you how I fix it, it's kind of cool. So part off, so we're gonna do cut off, use the intersection command, the vertical and this diagonal one, 
uh, show tools, no filters, show tools. There's my part off tool, set my feeds and speeds. Uh, lead in, will be straight in, lead out, be straight out. And uh, it says something about to change this radius on here, I believe. That's it. And I don't get that. I don't understand, but it's a, probably just slowing of it. So 0.4. And now I'm going to run it. And it parted it off. There was one other thing it said to leave on the X, you want to leave 1.3 millimeters. And that would be right here. So you, for some reason, they're not parting it off, depending on your machine. If you have a parts catcher, that's what it reads. So as you can see, I didn't part it off. Now I'm going to verify this. Oh, ready? Well, I'll just verify this last one. So everything looks good. I'm going to verify it. This is the issue I have. Do you guys see that? I left that there. I would like to see that round. Let me, let me show you a trick that what happens, what we teach at the school all the time. We actually set our radius here. And from the other classes I did today, I can choose this radius of this. I want that tool to follow and machine that radius. And it's that simple to add a radius. Do you see it? To the finished part. Don't worry about that other stuff. It's fine. And here. Let it run. And it is a little deeper. I don't know why it's a little deeper. That's odd. <laughs> it shouldn't be deeper. I have to look at the tool. It did it last night and it looked good. Let me double check. Oh. Well, that was the radius. Make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so bigger would be, let's do, flow it out a little bit. It may have been in a different angle or the way it generated it. But let's see if that cleaned it up. I like it to make it look good. But let's see what it is. Last night it was smooth. Still low. Hmm. I have to take a look at that. It does look funky. Good, Mark. Yeah, well, I'm, not, I'm not done yet, but just to show students will ask this one thing. What time are we at? 2.42. Um, there's a cut in here. You guys see that? So they don't have that in the document. That might frustrate some of the kids. All we're getting is this out of it. And I'll show you the differences. And I don't know why they did that, because I would have drawn, drawn that flat. But as you run this, and I'll turn on the workpiece now, there's the solid. This is what we cut. Oh, that looks good there. Okay. Do you guys see that? We're not getting that inside. Let me turn on the stock to make it solid. That's what it's cutting. So some of the things you may see in there, but as teachers, we got to come up with a solution to do that. And I'm going to finish up with this. Let me see if I saved it. Spinning chapter. Is this it? Let me see if this is it. I'm not going to save that, so I'm going to destroy it. I think it is. Let's see here. I'm not too sure. Hold on. Let me see here. Yeah, this is it. Uh, we'll make work translucent and this one translucent. And look at, well, in fact, we'll turn off work piece and just make this total. I was able to cut the inside of that to give that spin top. And the reason I did that, it was real simple. Um, uh, did I use dynamic? Let me see here. No, it's not that one. It would be, oh, it's up higher. Lathe rough. I think it's on this one right here. I turned my tool horizontal. I took this and made a copy of it, made it horizontal. So I put it in one of my, my lathe blocks. If you don't know what a lathe block is, don't worry. It will whittle that away out of the front. So there's always a solution to get the complete part out. And you just have to work with it. Oh, six minutes left. Any questions? Good job, Oof, I'm tired. That was fun today. Yeah, you did a lot of work. You don't supposed to do that much work? <laughs> Roxy, how did you like it? It was really interesting. Yeah. That. I know it's it's a lot of information. I have 30 years into it, but just practicing with it, you'll start seeing it. And the idea is, is digitally, that's what I'm really going to work on this, this semester with students. I'm going to train them 
on toolpathing and understand that and seeing the, the virtual machines because they're not going to allow us to go into the lab. I'm going to do my best. But I think my philosophy is, and people can say, oh, you're wrong, 99% of what I do is on the CAD CAM system. The machine, I just take the fixtures that I draw on and machine them out to fit there. The setup, it never changes over there. You may buy different tools, but 99% of what I do, so I'm going to tell my students to allow them to understand that we're going to spend majority of time on the CAD cam and look at virtual. If you ever get the opportunity to touch a machine in the future, that's all I can tell them. This is all you have to learn is how to do the work offsets, set up devices, true off devices, and do tool length offsets. Everything else is done from the computer. And, I, and I, I ha I'm working on a job right now that d d defines that. Uh, I'm doing all the programming here. The material's not here. And when it comes in, I'm ready to go. It's one of those things that uh, you could be anywhere in the world. So hear that, John Marquez? Oh, John's there. He's going to have to. Glenn, you're going to have to do the same thing, huh? What's that? Teach 100% online. So everything we're, you do. We're 100% online, yeah. Just everything CAD camp. And, and we can do that. We can still teach them how to program. 99% of what we do in the machine shop is on the CAD system if you're programming with it. I really believe that. Yes, mm -hmm. we got to learn the tools and hands and touch them and see them. We're gonna, there, there's going to be a generation that's going to miss part of that. And, uh, it's, Mark, can you, you show that late part being uh, turned on a, on a Haas? Uh, no, there's no simulation on that. That's okay. what you're asking, correct? Yeah, I like that I, because it gives them a little bit of a... Right. They just don't have, they don't have simulation here. Like the mill. I think they do, but maybe just haven't got here. the latest version of it or something. Maybe let me double check simulation. I don't think there's a lathe machine in here. There's no lathe machine. There's nothing, 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 nothing. Yeah, and and in fact, uh, Immerse to Learn has um, a lathe machine, a Haas that yeah. you can do. It. Load that same file in the Immerse to Learn. Yes, you can load these straight into the Immerse to Learn. Yes, you can. That's one of the neat things. Oh, you know what? I forgot to share that with you. Let me show you what I was looking at. Sorry about that. I just realized. So what I went to is I went to here, and there's no simulation here. You see that, Frank? In lathe. It's not active. And then also right here where you set up your machine, lathe style, there's nothing here. Do you see it? There's no lathe. So all these are just CNC machines and different axes. That's what I meant to show you. Sorry, I didn't show that to the class there. And there's a chat. Did someone say something? These were great classes. Thanks for being more. Oh, thank you, Andrew. Anybody have any questions? You know how to contact me, imarkcnc at gmail.com, imarkcnc YouTube. Uh, I'm hoping, looks like I'll be adding a lot more videos because I got to do a lot of videos for my class. Uh, Glenn? Thanks, Mark. Good to see you. What, watch this. Uh, um, I need to share this with you. You got a second, yeah, everybody? This is one of the things. I, I remember I shared the, the um, where's the internet? I shared the, okay, here it is over here. That, that class of mine with you. And I, I haven't yeah. completed this yet, but watch. I just want to show you this. We were, were you required to do that online class this summer? To teach online, to learn how? No. Okay, watch this. I've been teaching online for a couple of years on th different classes, so I didn't have to. Oh, do you did the certification already, right? The state um, certification? I told or them I was experienced, so they told me I didn't have to do it. Are you serious? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they made us do a 20-hour course. What's going on here? Oh, I know what's right. Yeah, we have a course, too. But they didn't require everyone. Oh, man, they did us. Even our adjuncts that were there for a long time. So what I'm doing is I've learned a lot here and, and I can eventually I'll share this with you. I don't know if you have a setup class, but this is our sandbox. This is what I did. The home page sets it up. If they want to go to modules, assignments, and this is good for all teachers if you do this. So if I go to the assignments, here's my assignments page for the, this one right here. And as they go in, they can come in and it's all online, goes through what they want to do, what they have to do. It even sets up a Rubik's for them. They go to the next one, they do the next one. So I don't have to be online teaching if I don't want to with this. And this is just how to turn on a CNC machine. The next one, and it goes to the discussion. Yeah, next. Mark. Yeah, mine's set up exactly the same way. And Good. it's like, it's like 
you you can do it all through that and not even have to be there. Right. But what they gave us a hard time about and I had to fill out all kinds of paperwork on was we're not a correspondence college. These are not online courses. They're only there by emergency. So we have to meet at the same time. We have to give lectures. We have to use Zoom. Oh, good. That's what I'm going to do. But they made us take this. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mess around. I, I like talking to, uh, to my students and stuff. Yeah. A little. Yep, totally. So, I'd yeah. The same way. Okay, good, good. Um, I, I, would, I, would, I mean, I do not want to just, good luck, learn no. it on your own. I would hate that. I, I, w I wouldn't go to that class. In fact, that's what my, my boys from high school had to do. They just yeah. kind of threw them in the, under the water there. So. Well, thanks, Mark. Um, thanks, Mark. No, yeah. Being able to see that quick part stuff and the, the, the direction Mastercam's moving is really good. Yeah, I'm happy with that because I never used Quick Park. I didn't like it. I like to teach Mastercam, and that's that's what they're doing there. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Uh, rest of your day. Bye. You too. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. All right. Good job, Marco. All right, Franco. Call me later if you want. Okay. You got bye. it, bud.